Taking the derivative of functions is great, but how do you take the derivative of an inverse function? Depending on the inverse, it might be a pretty straightforward procedure, but for some inverse functions, it may be a little less straightforward. For example, arc sine of x. How do you take the derivative of that? Well, today I'm going to show you the inverse function derivative rule. I'll show you why it's true and then we'll use it for a simple example. To show you where this derivative rule comes from, it's crucial that you understand what an inverse function is. So here's a quick diagram to help jog your memory. Let's let f be a function with inverse f inverse of x, which for notational convenience, we'll just call g of x. So how this all works is if we plug x into our function f, the output is f of x. And how an inverse function works, in this case our inverse function g, is we would put f of x into g and g would undo f. So its output would just be X. I'll also remind you that for a function to have an inverse, it needs to be what we call one-to-one. -one. So for example, if this function had another input, say y, which also had that same output, f of x, then this function could not have an inverse. Because if we plugged f of x into g, that inverse function, it wouldn't know what to do. Should it output x or should it output y? Because both of these inputs go to the same output, that forbids there being an inverse. Anyways, let's get on with the demonstration of where the inverse derivative rule is going to come from. Like we said, inverse functions undo each other. So let's start with an equation showing that. If I take our function g, which is the inverse of f, if we plug f into g, because they undo each other, this would just be x by definition of an inverse function. g undoes f and so we're just left with x. Now what we're going to do is take the derivative of both sides of this equation. On the right, the derivative of x is just equal to 1. On the left, we have a composite function, g of f of x, and so we'll need to use the chain rule. The chain rule begins with the derivative of the outside function, so g prime of f of x, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so multiply by f prime of x. And now we can solve for this derivative f prime by dividing both sides by g prime of f of x. That's going to lead to the following equation, f prime of x equals 1 divided by g prime of f of x. And this is the rule for finding the derivative of inverse functions. And let me remind you that the inverse function relationship is symmetric. So not only is g the inverse of f, but similarly f is the inverse of g. So if we have a function g and we want to find the derivative of its inverse, all we have to do is take the derivative of g, plug in the inverse function, and then just do one divided by that. And notice, because this equation is solved for f prime, f prime should be the derivative that you're trying to find, because you'll already need to know what the derivative of g is in order to use this rule. So if you don't know the derivative of g, you're out of luck. This is going to be the function whose derivative you're trying to find. Also from this rule, we can see that the derivative of the inverse function is only going to exist where this derivative composite function is not equal to zero, since we can't have zero there in the denominator. Okay, so here's our rule. Let's go through a simple example of applying it. Let's say we want to find the derivative of the square root of x. We could do that with the power rule, but let's try doing it with the inverse function rule. What is the inverse of square root? 
Well, that would be squaring. So in this case, g of x is x squared. That's the inverse of square root of x. So if I want to find f prime, the derivative of square root of x, all I have to do is apply this rule that we just proved. It tells me the derivative is going to be one divided by the derivative of the inverse function and what's the derivative of this inverse function? Well, that's pretty easy. The derivative of x squared is just 2x. So it's going to be the derivative of the inverse function, 2x, but with the function whose derivative we're trying to find plugged in. So we need to plug in f of x. Plug that in to the derivative of the inverse g. So the derivative of the inverse function is 2x x is the input, I need to input the original function, square root of x, and so there it is, that's the derivative. And this is the same as what we would have got using the power rule, because the square root of x is equal to x to the one half, and if you take the derivative of that, the one half comes down as a coefficient, and then its power gets reduced by one. So it's one half x to the minus half, which is just one over two x to the half, and x to the half is the same as root x. So that is the inverse function derivative rule. There's a quick example of how you can apply it. I'll leave a link in the description to some other examples, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or requests.